Brianna Cobb stood in the training room with Jemima Featherford smiling widely at her. What? Arson asked. Wonder Wet Lynn shook her head. Nothing, I'm just glad to have you back, she said. Arson smiled. We'll see how happy you are when you're rolling on the ground trying to put the fire out, she said. As the two friends began to battle Arson began to think back on her time with the Freedom Phalanx Reserve. She thought about how far she'd come from being an orphaned street urchin with a sordid past to being a protector of the city. Brianna used to have a mother and father, a sister, and a happy home. All of that changed when her sister was killed by a stray bullet from a drive-by shooting. Her parents were so distraught by the loss of their beloved Lindsay that they sought revenge against the gang responsible for taking their daughter. One night Brianna's father went to the hideout of the gang and killed two of their members before he was gunned down himself. After the loss of her husband and daughter, Brianna's mother went insane and was deemed unfit to care for her remaining daughter. Brianna was put into foster care and was bounced from home to home because of her tendency to act up. By the time she was 15 she was running with a gang of anarchists bent on bringing down big corporations and law enforcement in Paragon City. When she was 18 she was knocked into a vat of chemicals by a police officer during a bombing attempt she was trying to carry out at a Cray Pharmaceuticals facility. The chemicals altered her DNA and gave her the ability to control fire. Looking back on it now, it was probably what saved her life as she escaped the burning building and collapsed in a nearby alley. She crossed paths with Dementia's knight one night and was recruited by him into the team she now knew as her family. As the two heroes continued to spar Jemima Featherford was also thinking about how far she'd come in her own life, and how grateful she was to be a part of the team and to have friends like Arson and the rest of her teammates. Wonder Wetlin seemed to be doomed to wear diapers for her entire life. As an incontinent woman she was forced to wear the absorbent garments to keep herself safe from an even greater embarrassment. Being an extremely smart young woman, the 24-year-old was on the fast track at her university and earned a grant for her research in the field of curing incontinence. During the demonstration of her invention Jemima was bombarded by an altered energy blast caused by the interference of clockwork minions that caused her machine to malfunction. When she finally woke up in the hospital she found that she could charge her fists with energy and encase her feet in stone. After that she'd run into Half-Life Harriet and was recruited in the Freedom Phalanx Reserve she found her true calling as a superhero. She'd met new friends and overcome great obstacles in the name of justice and virtue and was stronger than ever because of it. Jemima helped Brianna up from the floor of the training room as the young hero massaged her sore ribs courtesy of a stone-footed kick to the torso care of Wonder Wet Lynn. Don't worry, you'll beat me someday. Jemima said as she put her arm around her friend. Arson put her arm around Jemima and walked with her to the door of the training room. I'm not worried, as long as I can use the toilet I'll always beat you, she joked. The two friends laughed together as the door to the training room opened and they went back to their rooms.